Hello and welcome. We begin with the big story we are tracking for you today. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met in Geneva. Frankly, the two leaders did not expect a breakthrough, and that's exactly what happened. Another meeting, another round of diplomacy, and no concrete answers. Blinken says any aggression will be met with a swift response, while Lavrov accused the West of not keeping their promises. Basically, the same words, just in a new setting. Russia has never, nowhere, not a single time, through its official representatives, threatened Ukrainian people. As I told you, it's not the end of our discussions. Next week, we will, as Antony Blinken highlighted several times, receive the written response. We also know from experience that Russia has an extensive playbook. Uh, of aggression short of military action, including cyber attacks, paramilitary tactics, uh, and other means uh, of advancing our interests aggressively uh, without uh, overtly using military action. Those types of Russian aggression will also be met with a decisive, calibrated, and again, united response. Russia has long been insisting for its demands to be taken seriously. The demands include sweeping security guarantees, including a permanent ban on Ukraine joining NATO. This time, Lavrov says Washington has agreed to provide Russia a written response to its demands. For the U.S. and its NATO and other European allies, nothing less than a vast pullback of troops works, something Blinken asked Lavrov to do during the meeting. So what exactly is the current situation? Russia and the United States are talking again, while the country that they are discussing is left out of the table. Our Russian troops remain gathered at the Ukrainian border, while the West scrambles to put up a united front. The current conflict between the West and Russia has many layers. They are fueled by multiple issues, but at the crux of one conflict is one belief. Russia believes that it was betrayed by the West, that the West broke promises made at the end of the Cold War. The promise in question is that NATO would not expand to the East. Now, Putin has long argued that the U.S. broke a promise it made in 1990. While there are different interpretations on what was promised to Russian leader Gorbachev then, Russian President Vladimir Putin has long looked at it as betrayal. Let's pull out a map to explain why he thinks so. Now, here's a map of Europe. The countries marked in yellow are the ones that joined NATO before 1997. This includes the likes of Norway, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, and others. But take a look at the countries marked in orange now. These are the countries that joined the military alliance after 1997. It includes several Central and East European states that were once a part of the Soviet Union or under its sphere of influence. Four of them, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, have borders with Russia. So we get why Russia is now worried. If Ukraine joins NATO, the alliance will be at Russia's gates. But the point is Ukraine was satisfied with its position a decade ago. It did not want to join the alliance. But the invasion of Crimea in 2014 has left Ukraine worried. It wants to ensure its security, and joining NATO seems like the best option. As for NATO, the conflict with Russia has sparked its unintended renewal. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the alliance lacked a meaningful role. The U.S.-led invasion of Iraq in 2003 created bitter disputes between several members. Macron even once described NATO as brain dead. But the conflict now has given it renewed purpose, an allied unity in an often fractious organization of 30 member states. Currently, nothing has changed. A 90-minute long meeting in Geneva was another diplomatic scramble, the latest in the flurry of diplomacy in the region. But will it avert a potentially devastating new war in Europe? Only time will tell. Now, we are being joined by our correspondent Nick Harper from Washington and Julia Chapman from Moscow to discuss this further. Nick, coming to you first, how is Washington viewing the U.S.-Russia talks over Ukraine, which just concluded in Geneva? 
Well, look, the United States has undoubtedly been engaged with frantic diplomacy over the last two weeks. We had Wendy Sherman, the Deputy Secretary of State in Europe, for pretty much the whole of last week. And we've had Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State in Europe, again this week. Uh, that very important meeting with Sergei Lavrov, really an opportunity for the US to once again lay out that it has a red line. If Russian troops move across the border into Ukraine, the United States will consider that an invasion. And Anthony Blinken said in remarks to the press afterwards that there would be a swift, severe and united response from the United States and its partners, namely NATO. There has been this warning throughout this week, echoed by President Biden, that there would be a steep price to play for Russia if it were to invade. But as you noted, we had this 90 minute meeting and yet there is still no breakthrough. There's no obvious resolution to this escalation of tensions. Anthony Blinken says that he will be returning here to Washington to discuss matters with President Biden and other lawmakers here in the US Capitol. They will provide Russia with those written responses next week and they hope that they'll be able to meet again, perhaps in person, at some point next month. But at this stage, it's still not clear exactly how a breakthrough may be achieved. All right, next day with us. Julia, moving on to you, how is Moscow seeing the Geneva talks as Russia is insisting that troops from NATO member states must leave Romania and Bulgaria as a part of the security demands it is seeking from the US-led alliance? Russia sees these as fairly constructive talks that have been held in Geneva uh, today on Friday. Uh, they wanted to put forward all of their proposals once again and uh, be convinced that they were being listened to. Sergei Lavrov seemed to suggest that that was his impression coming out of these discussions uh, with Antony Blinken, but he did also point out uh, that from the Russian perspective, the Americans can be somewhat unreliable. And so uh, he wanted to see these written responses to Russia's security demands. Uh, Antony Blinken did say that he would offer uh, something in writing. He didn't say it would be a point by point response to these demands, but he did say that there would be concerns and ideas shared. Whether that's enough for Russia, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but certainly the fact that the Russians are willing to continue dialogue. Sergei Lavrov, I think, crucially said today that this is not the end of discussions uh, is a positive sign. There may be no de-escalation so far, but neither has there been an escalation. Right. Don't go away, Julia. My next question to you, Nick. Do you see the situation diffusing in the coming weeks? Well, that's certainly the hope. But President Biden, when he was speaking just a couple of days ago, predicted that Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, would go into Ukraine. Now, he didn't put a timeline on that, but there's certainly been suggestions coming from uh, top U.S. security officials over the course of the last week or so that an invasion, if it were to take place, could be imminent, something that could take place within the coming weeks. President Biden, as his team, are all involved in this uh, very severe diplomatic effort to try and reduce the tensions. They all admit they don't know what President Putin's intentions are, and they're unable to guess whether or not he definitely wants to invade uh, or not. But while we have this diplomatic push and these attempts to de-escalate, the matter of Ukraine is still very much in the air. Uh, the West is pushing as hard as it can uh, against Moscow. But at this stage, it's not entirely clear what the next steps might be uh, to try and reduce those tensions, which have only been ramping up over recent weeks. Right. Now, Julia, back to you. Can we expect another round of meetings between President Biden and President Putin, as Nick mentioned there, in the near future? It hasn't been ruled out. Uh, Sergei Lavrov was asked that by a member of the press uh, in his press conference after today's meeting. He said that President Vladimir Putin uh, is always happy to meet uh, with Joe Biden. It would have to take some preparation, um, but certainly the suggestion is that first there would be yet another ministerial level meeting. As Nick said, uh, there's a possibility that they could meet uh, at some point in February once those proposals have been gone over. Uh, but certainly 
certainly uh, it is on the table for there to be a presidential meeting at some point in the near future. Uh, there's still a long way to go when it comes to the diplomacy that would be leading up to that. Um, but whether or not that's something that the Kremlin is after, uh, we don't yet know. Right, we'll leave it there. Julia and Nick, thank you both very much for being with us on this broadcast. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.